It's been a long held dream. Those were the words that were spoken to us some 30 years ago. And we're going to be showing you and telling you just how we constructed that dream in his eyes within 30 years. I'm Joanna Hill Heitzman and Doug Murray is with me as we share the remembering of things that transpired, the scenes that set up this foundation and where we fit in and how you fit in. And Doug, I think you're going to give us the history of the time. Yes, uh, Mr. Hunt, uh, I first knew in, in 1972, but he had of course been around the area for a long time. He was born and raised in Troy, Ohio, and actually graduated from Troy High School. One of the big things in his life, of course, was uh, uh, World War II. And during World War, War II, he was part of the Merchant Marine, which a lot of people probably don't know. Uh, while he was a member of the Merchant Marine, he became a radio operator and uh, really fell in love with the, the actual radio business during those years. Uh, I, I've heard from him that uh, he uh, did more than his part in the war and of course that was a long time ago, but that's where he really learned the radio business. In 1940, after the war in 1946, he did of course return to the area and uh, started thinking about a, forming a radio station and starting a radio station and that was the, uh, the era of the WPTW AM radio station. 1946, he uh, worked on setting it up in 1947, I believe it went on the air. Of course, at th that time, I was really a young kid, I think maybe eight or nine years old, raised on a dairy farm in uh, Cummington, and we listened to WPTW Radio AM when we were milking cows in the morning <laughs> and the evening, so I had a good feel for the station a long, long time ago. But I didn't really meet up with Dick Hunt until 1972 when I came back into Pickle after college and uh, uh, help run a business and start a business in the Piqua area. Dick, uh, after he started the radio station, of course it became fairly successful and along the way eventually he uh, asked a, a gentleman from the Dayton area to come up and be a partner and that was uh, C. Oscar Baker. And so Mr. Baker came up and they became equal partners and eventually uh, Mr. Hunt uh, left the Piqua area left the Miami County area when he uh, bought a station in Sheboygan, Michigan and along the way owned uh, several other stations during his lifetime. So he started living in Sheboygan and eventually also uh, bought a home in Florida and that Florida home became his actual tax residence so to speak. Uh, but he did travel back to the Pickle area many times and as you'll find out later from Joanna was actively involved uh, with the radio station here in town again upon the death of C. Oscar Baker unexpectedly. Uh, the reason I wanted to talk a little bit about uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Baker was uh, he had a daughter, her name is Lisa Baker and she still lives in Piqua. She's been a member of our board for a long, long time and actually has served as president uh, during a term of two years and is still very active in our foundation uh, on committees and so forth. So. Uh, even though Mr. Baker is no longer with us, uh, he has a daughter who's very active in Mr. Hunt's foundation. The uh, actual startup of the, or formation of the, of the foundation legally, and I'm not going to spend a great deal of time uh, involved with this, but as a CPA there are certain reasons why we became a private foundation or Mr. Hunt elected to become a private foundation. Uh, I think it's, that question comes up quite often from people who, when they find out we are a private foundation. The tax laws say that if you have one gentleman or one person who gives a substantial amount of money to start up a foundation, uh, you have to be able to prove that the money is going to be coming in in the future from the public in general, not just from that person. And so a lot of times, like you've heard about the Bill Gates Foundation, that's a private foundation because the, most of the money has come in from Mr. Gates. Uh, we had a similar situation and Dick's attorneys in uh, Sheboygan suggested that we perhaps be a private foundation. Well, we found out along the way that wasn't that we be a, a private foundation. Legally, we had to be a private foundation because we couldn't prove that uh, others in the community would uh, give more than a third of, of the inflow of funds uh, over a certain period of time. So we elected to become a private foundation. That has a few 
uh, tax implications, but not nearly as much as people might think. We, we do have to pay 2% of our investment income as an excise tax, and that's one of the major differences. We also have to meet a test, which was we routinely done. We have to give away to charity at least 5% of the market value of our securities uh, every year, or, or we could uh, face another excise tax. Of course, our goal is to never pay that part of the tax, and we've been pretty successful at that. So that's the major reason if, if the general public ever asks, and we do have donors who occasionally ask why we're a, pri a private foundation, and that's why. It really has no uh, other implications, and uh, as I'll talk about later, uh, that's an area that we want to explore down the road, a possibility of, of uh, leaving that and becoming a public foundation. So anyway, in, uh, uh, during this period of time, uh, C. Oscar Baker unexpectedly passed away from a heart attack, and uh, Dick uh, had to come back down to our area. And, and along the way, at that point, Joanna was appointed station manager. So if you want to get into that, feel free to do so. <laughs> right. Uh, as Doug says, I was the manager of the station WPQW AM and WCLR FM at that time. And as a traveling back and forth after his wife died, and we're not quite sure what the year was right now, but anyway, uh, when we were in, in Florida, uh, my husband at that time had also been in uh, the Navy starting in 42 after the declare of World War II in December of 1941, I believe. And so they became quite close. So it was that reason, primarily, that we extended an invitation to Dick to stay with us when he was stopping going to and from Florida to Michigan, either going or coming. So he would be in Pickwell for that time period. And the early meetings, many of them, were held at our home. So I had to let that be brought in at this point uh, to let you understand some of the f configurations that were going on in the initial startup of this foundation. Um, we became involved with Mr. Hunt the way we've just explained 30 years ago. And it's amazing, it was almost to the day uh, that we were talking about that we started that. Like in July, the first meeting of the corporation was held on July the 18th at my home. Uh, the Ohio Nonprofit Corporation provides that before or after filing documents of incorporation, which is what had been done, we should select a board of directors at a meeting. Therefore, the undersigned were the following resolutions that were taken that appointed uh, Dick Hunt, of course, as president, Joanna Heitzman, and Doug Murray as that particular corporation before anything else could be done. But then on the first meeting held in July, again at my home, several pieces of legislation were formed that had to be signed. And Doug, there were many of those legal ones that really surpass trying to explain briefly, but they were necessary to establish this foundation. Uh, as I told, uh, as I told, uh, yeah, you're right. As I told uh, Doug, they had to be set up that way in order to clarify us with the powers of be of different organizations that made it a tax-free organization, a nonprofit. And these, I believe, were the ones we were talking about. In lieu of the first meeting, we had to resolve. There you go. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Well, of course, we had uh, the Articles of Incorporation uh, done. done. And uh, Mr. Hunt, uh, at the time, uh, elected to be president of the corporation, of the foundation. Although that didn't last very long because he recognized the fact that he was in and out of the area a lot. Uh, and so eventually, uh, uh, 
as, as we went forward, I became the president, Joanna remained the secretary, and uh, I think I was treasurer at the same time, I'm not sure. Uh, but later that changed. Yeah. When we move further down the road, you'll see where uh, Doug resigned as being the treasurer, uh, moving into the foundation as the president. Actually, uh, uh, that, that situation remained uh, that way for a number of years. Mr. Hunt, as long as he was living, uh, routinely made, made sure that he called me up. He'd call me up at, at my office and he'd want me to renew as president again. And I could never <laughs> convince him that uh, I didn't know really that we needed to pass that presidency around so that everybody on our board got a chance to be president. And I could never convince him of that until he passed on. And then I immediately <laughs> resigned and we started a new situation where, where every couple of years we have a new president. Right. Uh, at the second meeting of the foundation, we submitted a <coughs> list of over 85 names to Mr. Hunt, as he had asked. We prepared those together with uh, Mr. Welch. I believe he might have been the Edward Jones representative at that time. Again, Mr. Hunt had investments with that uh, firm and a uh, boyhood friend. What was his last name? Dick? I'm, I'm not sure. <laughs> We've got it in our minutes here. Um, anyway, there were th uh, four of us that came up with this list of 85 names, and we presented those to Dick for him to review, and within hardly any time, a couple of uh, meetings down the road here, you're going to see where he chose the rest of the names to complete what the foundation bylaws call for which is a total at that time of nine directors and nine trustees. Uh, it sounds like it's top heavy with the original incorporators, the directors, and then trustees as Mr. Hunt uh, named the, the groups that transpired into setting us up. But those names we'll give you in just a moment. At that same meeting, Mr. Hunt informed us that his trust would be footing the bills, so to speak, to set up that foundation during that first year. Uh, all of this was done again at a meeting at my home. So um, it was not only necessary to work, but then to have the house cleaned. <laughs> so we managed to do all that and this foundation became the start of his dream. Uh, directors in reviewing the foundation structure, uh, this is again in July of uh, 1986, called the bylaws were not active. He had two committees that at that point were not active. They were the administrative and the fund solicitation. But uh, he explained that they wanted to establish a uh, advisory committee to expand within the county to perhaps increase the awareness of the foundation uh, as future members of the board of the foundation. And uh, he wanted them to, after their initial meeting, to set up a chairman and a secretary to take minutes. They would not meet in reply to the foundation trustees and directors except once a year at the annual meeting. Uh, at those day dates, uh, Mr. Hunt named the uh, original foundation, I believe you have the names there? Yes, uh -huh. uh, it was Dr. Richard Adams. Of course, uh, most people in Miami County know, know Dick Adams. He was re representative, and, but at the time when he went on to the board, he was the superintendent of Upper Valley JBS. And subsequent to that, of course, when he retired from that position, he became a Miami County Commissioner and then went on to represent us, represent us in Miami County at, at, uh, in Columbus. 
Uh, also, we had uh, William Bill Cato, who was the president of, of, of back then of uh, Pickle National Bank, that subsequently all made, ended up to be Fifth Third Bank. Uh, we had Donald Rice, who was a physician in Covington. And before I finish this list, we were looking at people throughout Miami County. One of the big things that Dick wanted was this to be a county foundation. Uh, he felt like his success in the radio business and at WPTW uh, was because he was able to get business from throughout Miami County for, for advertising for uh, the radio station. And therefore, he always looked back at the area as where he, where he got his start and financially was able to move forward with other stations. He always looked back to Miami County, like many of us do, when we're, when we're originally from the area, that uh, the county uh, benefited, benefited uh, him greatly and therefore he wanted to return uh, his foundation monies back to the area. So we were looking at people from throughout Miami County and even in the early years. One thing that perhaps people may have forgotten is when we first started, we, we were Pickle slash Miami <laughs> County Foundation. We had two we were started out in Pequa, we had headquarters in Pequa, but we were really looking throughout the county. And we kept that name that way until uh, the city of Pequa or the Pequa citizens formed the own, their own Pequa Foundation and then people got thoroughly confused. Uh, they kept looking at Pequa slash Miami Fo uh, County Foundation and versus Pequa Foundation. So it wasn't too long after that we elected to become just the Miami County Foundation since that's how we wanted to market anyway and we hunt, we wanted to have people represent uh, our foundation throughout the county. So it's amazing, Doug, I'll intersp intersperse here. Dick was a staunch believer in wanting to set this up as a copy of the Troy Foundation and he kept bringing that up but that's why he was stuck on Pickwa for so long until at one of the meetings here it was not difficult to show him the support that the radio stations were actually being received and supported by the residents of the county. So he saw that and immediately, it was not long before we changed, right. before he changed his mind, even before we started uh, with right. this structure. The, uh, a couple of the final uh, members of the board were uh, Wallace White. Wally White was then the, the head of our library here in town and he's was a longtime member before he moved from the area. Uh, we also had uh, uh, Judge Goder, uh, Judge Richard Goder was an original member and of course he served uh, in the Miami County judicial system for a number of years and uh, so we felt uh, with, those, with those additions and with us that we had a good sampling of Miami County people who knew people people who uh, knew businesses and they knew the society and the area and that these would be people who could represent uh, the foundation in its early years. And uh, Mr. Goder was uh, put in the position, in the, because of his position as the, I believe, the probate judge right. at that point. He was to serve in that capacity. So anyway, that's, uh, that's the early on uh, uh, You know, at that same meeting, uh, he had just wanted to the motion was made to establish an advisory committee and he was busy even when he wasn't here evidently because he uh, told us that he had contacted people and he even had those names. His advisory committee was even established again of nine members and um, those names he had ready for us at this meeting on July the 11th and they're the ones listed down there. Uh, we have uh, Charlie Bear, uh, Catherine Rice from Newberry Township, uh, Jim, Jim Alba, Alba, West Milton, West Milton, George Ashton from Piqua. Charlie Bear, of course, was from Piqua. Charlie was at the time was the head of the uh, uh, the hospital, Upper Valley. Denton yes. Hospital. Right. Uh, Joe Duncan, who's a well-known businessman even today in the Miami County area, from Monroe Township. And of course, Joanna from Covington at the time. Uh, Margie Netsley, uh, that name probably rings a bell with a lot of people, who's, uh, of course, uh, was the wife of uh, our representative from Miami County at the time. Very good, by the way, a very good uh, representative to the foundation over the years. Right. Of course, she's no longer, I don't, is she still with us? I don't believe no. she is. And uh, 
she was of course from Laura. Bill Posey, Bill Posey at the time was a plant manager for Aravent here in town, and lived, but he lived in Tip City. And so uh, he had a very solid business background and we elected to have him go on. And uh, Pat Simmons from Troy. I don't know, is there any no, other that, that, that's it? That was the original nine that were advised, that were rec advised by Dick to serve in that position as the first advisory <coughs> committee for the foundation. We moved from that point on, oh, at that same meeting, believe it or not, we submitted, we were busy that first year, I think, year and a half, but we submitted to him a, a copy of what we hope to have as our grant uh, request form and he reviewed it but then he decided he wanted to have legal counsel and he suggested that a form that would be November the 1st would be the date for the grants to be submitted. They would be uh, this with the distribution to be December the 10th of 1986 was to be the first distribution and considering the fact that we didn't start th this organization until July of 1985, at that point we were speeding toward that first distribution. So he took that copy of the what was to be our grant resolution form and in uh, July, but then they were going to have to have them back to us by uh, November the 1st, so we, somewhere along that line, really must have gotten some fast work on his okay of that, mm -hmm. <laughs> of that form. So um, he must have made phone calls when we weren't around, somewhere or other. Uh, we also, uh, as we said, had that first meeting then to put those people to work. And, um, October, there were, no, December, we're back to 85, and then we have confusion in the ranks with a few, December came up, and as soon as I find that sheet, we will move on. December the 11th, 1986, the Board of Directors, we were at that point having uh, directors and trustees. So it was established that the directors would have their meeting prior to the trustees' meetings. So we were having minutes from both organizations. So we had December of uh, 1986, that we had the board of directors meetings, and then we would have the meeting of the trustees. So December, we had the first full meeting of the trustees and the directors. And by uh, advisory, invitation list of the advisory committee came. Um, five were present. Four of them couldn't make it for that meeting. Mr. Hunt, again, restated at that meeting the purpose of the foundation, which was established to solicit, receive, and administer assets exclusively for charitable purposes and would most effectively assist, encourage, and promote the health, education, and welfare of the citizens and inhabitants of the city of Piqua and its surrounding areas of Miami County, now and hereafter. He intended at that point, 70% of all grants would be the benefit of the PICWA and its citizens. He again still was kind of stuck on that. And the remainder being used for the surrounding areas of Miami County. Again, as he established people helping people. At that first order, we had $252,000 to be our working capital. 15,000 were set aside for the 1986 disbursements, 
we had received 20 requests by that time. And we looked at each other and said, what now? This was just kicking off. Did you have something you wanted to add there, Doug? No, I think, uh, of course, it sticks, sticks in my mind that uh, uh, Mr. Hunt was very emphatic on about what the organization should do. And, and he, made, he, fr he first came up with that, quote, slogan that we still use, people helping people. Uh, he was very emphatic and very, I was impressed when he, when he discussed exactly what he meant by his, uh, his orders, so to speak. And, uh, <laughs> It was Our marching orders. Right, right. So, uh, and the funding, you know, to be honest with you, the funding to start off was not really a whole lot. Uh, we were trying to get things rolling, but uh, it wasn't until later on that a lot of the funds came in. And uh, eventually, as Joanna mentioned, we start off 70-30 uh, in the Pickle area. And as, as we learned uh, in, in operating the, the foundation in early years, uh, there was a lot of people in the, in the Miami County who, uh, and a lot of, and some businesses, and we're finding out even more so today that look more to the county uh, as what the, they wanted to benefit the county, not necessarily their city they were even located. Yeah. The reason being, they they often were raised in an area in Miami County that was outside where they live now, or uh, particularly business areas or businesses. Uh, most of their employees didn't live actually in the city where they had their business and so they were more interested in looking at Miami County rather than just Pickle and, and the, those kind of ideas kept popping up and, and eventually we dropped that 70-30 so that we don't even look at pretty much we don't look at where they're located as long as they're located in Miami, Miami County. County. So, the same thing holds yeah. true for any grant that is distributed within the county. Right. You're going to find out how that takes place when we come back in just a moment with the second installment to see just where this foundation took off for.